Blowing Kisses offers a great way to enhance the creativity in portrait photography. You can use confetti or different particles, but sometimes it can be a little bit tricky to capture it in camera. So if you're wondering how you could create that using Luminar Neo, then today's tutorial is exactly what you need. Okay, so moving into Luminar Neo, where we starting in the catalog module, looking at our sample files. Here is a quick reminder that if you want to follow me along, then jump into the description of this video, follow the link there and download the sample files now. Now, as a part of the folder, you will get two images, one with the lady blowing the kisses on the right here and one towards us. So we're going to be creating the two effects. As a part of it, you will also get two overlays, both of them with different effect, and you're more than welcome to keep them and use them on your own images. However, they are part of our romance bundle. And if you're looking for more similar elements, like the blowing kisses, kisses, hearts, and so much more, then definitely check out the romance bundle by following the link in the description of this video or visiting our website, cleverphotographer.com. Anyway, back to our project. When you're ready, import the two ladies. And let's select this one first and move the image into edit module. In the edit module, as we work in with overlays, we're going to be focusing on the layers panel. First, we need to import our overlays. So we're going to click on the plus sign. And here we're going to click on load image. With this, navigate towards the sample files where you see the two images, as well as folder called overlays. So open it, select the first one and click on open. And since we already here, let's click on load image again, select the second overlay, click on open and import it too. So now in my images section, we have the two overlays. Now we're going to select the second, the one which blows the kisses on the side and click on it. By doing that, very quickly, it will appear on our layers panel on the top. Now we have this layer selected. You can see it as it has the orange selection of frame around it in the layers panel as well as on the image. Now you can see that it's a little bit transparent and we can adjust this very easily by going into the layer properties and increasing the opacity slider. But more importantly than the opacity, you can see that it kind of goes the wrong way, right? So we can very easily flip this by going back to layer properties and under the blend modes, we have an option to flip it horizontally or vertically. So we need the horizontally. So let's click on that and do that part. After this, we can zoom out a little bit. Let's do that. And then we're going to just drag the kisses and position them wherever we think it looks properly. Now we can make it just a little bit smaller, I think somewhere around here. And what we want to do, we want to take this part where there is the lots of kisses and they are kind of flat and make it look like it's on her hand. So I think something like this. And the rest of it, we will mask out. And of course, whatever is falling out should be kind of going out of her hand. You can also rotate the layer by going outside of it. And when it happens, you will get this little two arrows and you can rotate it around. So maybe that's a good idea. Let's do that and position it, let's say, right about here. Once we have it positioned right, we can then go into the masking. In the masking, select the brush. With the brush, we want to be on erase as we want to erase specific part of the overlay. Softness down on 10, strength on 100, and with the size, well, let's just bring it down a little bit. Now, we're going to zoom in. Again, using Command or Control Plus or Wheel on your mouse. And once we're here, we can still adjust the brush using the bracket keys. And let's remove some of these hearts and particles from here. So at the bottom, maybe somewhere around here and here as well. Let's have a look maybe further on this part. Let's have a look. This is maybe a little bit too much. So we can switch the brush back to paint, zoom in a little closer. And let's say that we're going to paint this part back. So something like this, we can still remove some parts if we feel like it doesn't look right. Maybe just a little bit more here. And I think that's about it. 
If you think that this one doesn't fit there neither, we can always switch the brush back to erase and very easily erase it. So that is erasing. But what about if we would like to add some extra hearts around to fill up a space or do something else? Well, how do we do this? Well, we're going to close the layer properties for now. And while we still have the hearts selected, we're going to scroll down all the way to the professional tools. In the professional tools, we're going to look for the clone tool. And once we open it, it will give us a message or prompt to click to set the source. So let's say that we like these hearts here and maybe we would like to add them in this location. So very simple. Let's just click on the top of the white heart. And once we do that, we have selected the area and we can now paint somewhere else and add them. Coming back to the tool, we can adjust the settings here, adjust the size, bring it down a little bit. Softness, we can keep on 100 or bring it down just a touch somewhere around 80 and strength, definitely keep it on 100. So where do we add the hearts? Let's say here, let's just click once. And from that point, we can very easily add these hearts here. If we would like to add uh, different hearts to different location, uh, let's say that we zoom in. After that, we're going to hold Alt or Option on our keyboard to select different heart. And after that, again, we can very easily brush this heart here, for example. Or let's take the white one. So again, Alt option, select a different area. And let's see, let's kind of add it right here. Just brush it in. So simple, right? Very simple thing. Keep using Alt or Option to select or sample the area and then just keep brushing. Quick look at the before and after and we are done adding the hearts. Now, finally, looking at the image, it has that kind of pastel pink feel. She also wear pastel pink sweater and other elements. So let's change the color of the hearts a little bit closer to her overall feel or the cloth. Still, same thing, heart selected, back up all the way to the Essentials tool, where we're going to use the color tool. With the color tool selected, we can go into the HSL panel. Let's make sure everything is nice and visible. And we have a different ways to do this. One of them is to go into the hue. So we're going to click on the drop down box, select the hue, and we're going to take the red on the top and move the slider. When we move it up, the hearts will become more orange. And when we move it down, they will become more red magenta. So you can do something like this. Or another way to do this, let's reset the slider by double clicking on it. We can do, we can go down to hue shift and move that. Now, when we move it towards the left, you can see they are getting more pink. When we move it towards the right, it gets something like red, orange, yellow, and so on. But we're looking for the pink. So let's go back somewhere around pink, purple. So I think around minus 25. And that looks great. Now, if you think that the hearts are still a little bit too dark, we can now very easily change the drop down box from hue into the luminance and, for example, increase the color of the red or also the magenta and purple. You can just make them a little bit brighter and match it even further. So this is it. This is now done adjusting the effect of the blowing kiss. And to really finish it off, one thing I like to do is to merge everything together and then apply a little LUT or color grading. And to do that, well, now in Luminar Neo, we cannot merge the layers in the application. So what we're going to do, we're going to right click on the image, then select export. In export, we're going to navigate towards the location of the sample files for this specific episode. Then we're going to name the image, let's say a mid edit number one, and then we're going to adjust the settings. Let me just make it a little bit smaller. Going into the settings here, sharpening on none. We don't want to add any extra sharpening. Resize, we're going to keep it on original to make sure that we get the same size of the image. sRGB on color space works great. The highest format or highest quality format here is stiff. 300 pixels on inch is a good option. Go for the LZW compression or keep it on none. It's up to you. In depth, 
keep it on 16 bits and don't forget to uncheck the save transparency. Now we're going to hit save and what's going to happen, it's going to take a moment and the application will export the image. Now, if you have the film strip open, it will already be there if you have added the image into the same location as the original files. Or of course, we can go into the catalog and add the image here. So remember, mid edit, this is how we called it. Now we can bring it back into the editing module where we can do multiple things. One of them is going into the creative tools and for example, open the mystical tool and add a little bit of cinematic glow to the image. So to the person as well as our heart. Then we can close it. After that, we can add additional glow to the heart. So let's open the glow tool. From the drop down box, let's select the Orton Effect Soft and just increase it. Let's see how that works. That is a little bit too bright, so let's switch it into traditional Orton Effect or maybe just a soft focus. What do we like? Maybe the soft focus. We do that. And what we can do, we can actually turn or switch on the masking, select the brush, make a nice big brush, somewhere around 260, adjust the strength down to, let's say, maybe 25. And now wherever we go into brush, the effect will appear. So one quick click, which will switch off the effect from everywhere. And now just very gently brush over the area of the hearts. So I think something like this. That looks good. We can close the glow tool. And as I say, to finish it off, quick color grading using the mood tool. So let's just open it. Let's click on the choose LUT dropdown box and let's pick one of the LUTs that come with the application. For example, the cinematic toning, hover over them and see which one you like. I quite like the long beach. Let's have a look. Or maybe the palm springs. Well, let's go for the palm springs. Select it, adjust the amount. If you think it's too strong, you can always bring it down or up. But I think for me, just about 20 with extra touch of saturation will make it really complete. <laughs> Close the mood tool and that's about it. Let's have a look. So this is our image we have just edited. Now let's go back. Which one is the, this is the original file. Let's reset it. Adjustments revert to original. So this is where we started and this is where we got. So that's the first project, lady blowing the kisses on the side. Now the second project where she's going to be blowing the kisses towards us. So you can see how it's photographed. It looks like she's holding the camera and taking the picture. What we're going to do, the workflow is pretty much similar. So you already get the idea. We're going to go into our layers panel, click on the plus sign and select the second set of overlays. Once it appears, well, very simply, we're going to increase the opacity up to 100. We don't need to flip the overlays this time, but we can zoom out a little bit, make it a little bit bigger and position this area, which is kind of sharper and make it look like it's on her hand. So I think around here, if we need, we can rotate it a little bit. I think just probably around here. If you want, you can make it still a little bit bigger and just position it. Yeah, I think right around here. Once we have it with the location or position, we can again use the brush to adjust it. So let's zoom in closer. Going back to layer properties, masking, brush, erase with the softness down to 10 and strength on 100. We can adjust the size of the brush using bracket keys and let's just remove few. I think probably just around here. I'm gonna see wherever it doesn't look great. Maybe this one as well. This is very creative part. It's completely up to you what you want to do. If you think, for example, that this whole part doesn't really belong there which could be the case. So let's say that you do something like this. You could pretty much remove it. So let's say that we remove all of this, which can work and look quite nice. Let's zoom out to have a look at it. To create something like this, you could do that. Or of course, you can always bring it back again by switching the brush back to paint, making it a little bit bigger and just brush back all these areas. It's up to you. Really, as I say, it's very individual, whatever you like to do. So let's just remove first few right here. I think that at least the white part, just to make it work a little bit better, I think something like this. Better, perfect. Just a little detail to bring it back. 
and that's about it. Now, do we need some extra, maybe just here uh, and a little bit here. So again, we know what to do. Close the layer properties, down to clone tool, uh, not zoom out, back in, down to clone tool, select the clone tool. Let's select, so there's white one, so let's add red one. So let's say that we're gonna select this part and just brush it right in. Although option again, let's see white one, I think around here and brush it right here. One more red, maybe right around here. That looks good as well. Mm, one more white, maybe one more white, just to this area and one more red here. So sample the red here and paint it here. Uh, do we want one more white here? We can one more time, auto option by sampling the area and then just brushing it here. That's about it. We can clone or close the clone tool. And again, we can adjust the color of this specific overlay. Well, we're gonna go through it one more time. Color tool, in a color tool, make sure that your HSL panel is open into the hue shift. And we're gonna just take the slider and bring it down until we get the pink we are looking for. We don't want it too purple. I think we're looking more for pink to match the background. So I think somewhere around here, maybe that's too much. Let's have a look around 16. Bring the saturation down as well. So going into the saturation and bring the red down just a little bit. I think somewhere around minus 30. And that will look quite nice. Let's have a look before and after. To finish it off, you know what to do. We're gonna right click on the image and select export. This time again, call it mid edit, this time number two. The settings is already saved. Just don't forget to unclick on uncheck the save transparency and hit save. With the image exported back to the catalog where you're going to select it, bring it into edit module where again, we have a different ways how we can enhance it. So let's say that we're gonna apply a little vignette. So vignette tool in essentials panel down to somewhere around minus 40 and also going into advanced settings and adding a little bit of inner light in the center. And then again, going into the creative section, mood tool, in the mood tool, click on choose LUT into the cinematic toning. And let's see, maybe the Bakersfield on this one with a little bit of extra warmth can look quite Nice. Closing the mood tool and we are finished. So similar idea, back to our film strip where we're gonna select the original sample file, reset the settings back to revert to original. And this is where we started. And this is where we ended. So our overlays with blowing kisses available here. As I said, if you want, you're more than welcome to use them on your own images and your own projects and if you want to see more of similar idea and similar content check out our romance bundle again by following the link in the description of this video or heading to our website cleverphotographer.com so this was another romantic edit however we have much more than this available on our youtube channel we have a full playlist of romantic or romance edits available for you to watch and continue learning and even more so, on our YouTube channel, we have a video for every single tool in Luminar Neo. So if you ever get stuck or you need to refresh yourself, then head to our YouTube channel, Clever Photographer, and continue learning now.